Hey everybody, my name is Daryl Obera, and today I'm going to be talking to you about some of the improvements that we've made to Bifrost in Maya 2016. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the ability to generate a foam model on top of a Bifrost liquid simulation. So in my file here, I've already gone ahead and set up a Bifrost liquid sim, and I've got that loaded up in the form of a scratch disk. So if we kind of scrub through here, you can see that the waves are moving along, and what we want to do is we want to take it to the next level. We're going to add some Bifrost particles on top of this to generate a really cool foam model. And this is really fast and easy to do. All you have to do is go ahead and grab your Bifrost container, jump up to the Bifrost menu, which now lives underneath the FX filter, and go and grab foam. So as soon as we do that, what's going to happen is Maya is going to go through now and start to generate another um, set of particles on top of the already existing simulation. And they're going to be these Bifrost foam particles. And you can see that they're, they're about to pop on and you're going to get a little white capping happening on top of these waves. Now we're going to have a lot of control to adjust the look and feel of these foam particles and how much emission happens based on different thresholds or different parameters that you can set. So if we go ahead and look inside of our Bifrost shape here, you can see that we've got these, these foam particles and you can kind of see them right here. There's really not that many. So what we want to do is just jump into the attribute editor and start to make this Bifrost liquid a little more sensitive to emission, to emitting more particles into the scene. So we'll go to that Bifrost wave container and we'll start to play around with the foam section, specifically around emission. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to double the amount of particles that are being emitted out, put it up to 2,000. And then the next thing I want to do is start to fine tune how these particles get added to my scene. So there's lots of different things that we're evaluating to decide whether or not we should be emitting more foam particles. The first one is pretty straightforward. It's the speed. What's the minimum speed have to be before some particles get emitted into the scene in the form of foam? So we're going to go ahead and drop that down to a value of 0.1. And the next one that we're going to look at is churn. So churn in this example, it's really pretty much just a turbulence, but keep in mind that if you had something like a washing machine that had a lot of spin or vorticity inside of it, churn would be the attribute that you'd be using to fine tune the amount of particles that are being generated in the foam model. So we'll go ahead and we'll just drop that one down also to a value of 0.1. And the last one that we're going to talk about really quickly is liquid curvature. So this is going to look to the liquid that's generating these particles or emitting these particles and how steep the changes are in the curvature to that. So if they're really steep waves, they're going to emit more foam particles. Pretty straightforward. So again, we're just going to drop that value down because I really want to get a lot of foam particles in my scene. Now keep in mind that the foam particles are being emitted from the liquid surface and they have the ability to be fine-tuned and how they're going to dissipate. And the way that it looks at it is based on whether or not the particles are above the surface of the water or below the surface of the liquid. So if they're below the surface of the liquid, they're going to behave more like bubbles. And you have separate controls to adjust them as opposed to when they're above the surface where they're going to look like more of a pure foam. So keep that in mind. When you're working with the foam system, you have both bubbles and foam sort of happening at the same time with a lot of control over how they're going to dissipate just below the emission section. So with that done, the next thing that we want to do is start to change the overall opacity of these guys. Right now, they're just straight opaque particles. I want to have them sort of be a little bit more solid in the denser areas and then kind of drop off nicely. So we're going to jump over to that foam wave shape. And this is very similar to the liquid shape that we looked, like, looked at back in Maya 2015. We have the ability to adjust things and remap things based on different attributes. So for this example, we're going to go ahead and use the opacity and we're going to remap that to density. So once we do that, we're going to go ahead and change the remapping section here to make it a little bit more sensitive. So instead of remapping a range from 0 to 20, we'll put that down to like 0 to 4. And I can use this ramp widget to really go ahead and start to adjust, you know, where that guy is going to kick in. So they start to look a little bit nicer. Now if we zoom out here, you'll see that we're emitting these foam particles over the whole liquid simulation, which is great for a really wide shot. But often you're going to have a shot camera that might be a little bit tighter. So what we can do is we can actually adjust the emission and have it be adaptive to a given camera. So let's go ahead and look at an example of that. So I'm going to go and turn on my cameras that are in my scene here. We kind of zoom out. You can see I've already got this shot cam, and this camera is just kind of panning across the top of the beach. So what I want to do is I want to make a relationship between this camera and our liquid simulation for our foam. So we'll go ahead and we'll just grab that um, liquid container. We'll add to our selection this shot cam. We'll go to that Bifrost menu, and we'll just simply add it in as an adaptive camera. So now that we've got that guy done, the next thing that we need to do is start to fine tune a few of the attributes. We're kind of halfway there with this camera adaptivity. We've got to go ahead and add in a little bit more attributes on the actual foam emission section to really make that relationship. So the first thing we're going to do is just get the field of view to, uh, to match that camera, which is 40. 
and the aspect ratio for that camera is actually uh, 1.85. So we'll go ahead and we'll crank that guy down to the, be the same value for my uh, for my camera here. And finally, we'll just go ahead and we'll turn on the clip to camera thruster attribute. So as soon as we do that, it's now going to only be emitting particles inside of that camera's frustrum. The adaptivity slider I want to tweak a little tiny bit. I want a little bit more particles coming out of that guy. So I'm going to just drop that threshold a little bit to a value of 0.1. By doing that, we now have stronger emission happening inside the range of that camera, and it looks pretty good. So the final thing that we want to do is just go ahead and do a play blast for this, and then I'll show you what the ended play blast looks like, and we'll finish off by looking at a movie file, an MP4 file, of the final rendered images done with mental ray. It's worth mentioning that the shading model for both the Bifrost Liquid and the Bifrost Foam has been changed in 2016. It's now based on the Mila shaders inside of uh, Maya, so it's kind of a more current shading approach. It makes things a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and cash this out, go grab a coffee, we'll come back, look at the play blast of the viewport, as well as the finished mental ray renders in an MP4. All right, so let's check out what we got. Maya's been processing away while we were off getting our coffee, so we'll just jump out to Windows and check out this Play Blast. So you can see that Viewport 2.0 gives us a pretty good idea of what this liquid sim is gonna look like and that foam model looks like before we even commit the software render. So it's really, really kind of nice. You'll notice that the foam obviously is only inside of that camera frustrum, which is exactly what we set up with that camera adaptivity. And the finished renders done with mental ray end up looking pretty sweet. So we've rendered out two camera shots, obviously one from above and then one from that shot cam that we constrained that emission to. And you, when this plays back, notice how the foam kind of just rides nicely on top of that water, on top of that liquid sim. You've really got the sense of that kind of, that stack layering effect of that foam sort of just riding on top of those waves. And if you look closely, you'll also notice that inside of those waves, there's little bubbles and things like that that are kind of below the surface level. And again, they're gonna have separate attributes that adjust the foam above the water and the foam above the water. So it gives you a lot of flexibility and control to really kind of dial it in the way you want. And then obviously we've got that nice big splash there that kind of hits off that rock at the end. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for taking the time to check out the foam model inside of Bifrost in Maya 2016. Thanks again. Cheers, everyone.